Yeah. Ready? So we're going to get started. Go. Go. All right, you're live. Okay, so this is a ginger bug, which I'm going to send you all a link for. And I used a little bit of the juice from this in the recipe that's coming out of the lactose fermented cranberry relish, which is a nice um, Thanksgiving and Christmas thing to add to your table. And um, so, because I think some recipes might say to use whey, but since we're vegan, like, that wasn't going to work. But this was great. And the recipe turned out fantastic. So. Um, if we have time at the end, I'll show you how I'm going to make a ginger ale. So we'll see how we go with the time. So for the sauerkraut, you can literally use any kind of vegetables, like whatever you have in the fridge. So it's great for like if you're in a CSA and you've got like excess of something, you can just chop up the full vegetables and make it into a fermented, like a fermented dish. Um, you can see some of these resources that I have here. This little book here is amazing. I was just reading that last night. And um, it mentions how um, sauerkraut is often used in cancer clinics to help cancer patients. It's kind of like, it's not just a food, it's also a medicine. It's just because it's like probiotic. Mm -hmm. So it's just a fabulous thing to add to your um, family's um, food, nutrition. So here, I, I recently went to Whole Foods and I saw this fabulous um, sauerkraut that had leeks and horseradish, which actually I made some back here and I'll, I'll bring that forward in a minute. It's kind of not quite at its maturity yet, but I'm going to taste it. And if it tastes good, I'll let you all think into it. <laughs> but, um, so I haven't <coughs> ever used leeks and horseradish before. I've mainly just used like um, cabbage, carrots, garlic, and then dill. Um, yeah, that's usually my main kind of components of my background. So, um, if anybody wants to volunteer to do some chopping, that would be great. I'm going to add garlic to this as well. Um, carrots here. And you need a good quality salt. So, that helps to kind of uh, get the macro fermentation going. And these are juniper berries, which I also add. I got these in the subdivision across the street. There's a nice little juniper berry bush, but you can buy them at Whole Foods. So, and that's my dill. So, I'm going to... What is your good quality salt? Yeah. Um, I got this one at the um, at Whole Foods today in bulk. It's just like a, you know, it's just got lots of minerals in it. It's sea salt. So. Honey, do you want me to talk about the prebiotic? Oh yeah. yeah. Also, I'm going to talk about the prebiotic, which is the animal that lately. Oh, and I'm going to add these um, Jerusalem artichokes as well, which she'll be talking about. Mm. And they grew in Lebanon. And he's Paul and Melanie's husband. Mm -hmm. And um, we all know that probiotics are good, but not everyone understands why they're good. And what they do is they they the probiotic works in conjunction with the prebiotic. It's analogous to a garden. The prebiotic is the soil, and the probiotic is the plant, okay, in, in, the, in the analogy. So the prebiotic is, is crucial. Without the prebiotic, the probiotic doesn't have anything to grow on. It's like the little house, or the substrate in technical language, for the probiotic. So you have to have a little house for the probiotic to work. And so what is a prebiotic? Well, a prebiotic is a, is a, a form of plant. It's a non-digestible non plant fiber, and I printed out the wiki entry for prebiotic, and basically it's a non-digestible uh, fiber that uh, will colonize the large intestine. Um, and so you get these in beans, and, and, and uh, you get them in like uh, salads, like tonight I had this for dinner, for one of these I make like three or four of them up at a time because every time I go to make a salad it ends up being huge. And so I've just, I put three of these in a bottle and this is like three days old but it tastes fine because mm -hmm. um, I can seal it up. Mm -hmm. And even the apples didn't turn funny. And so um, this is a great prebiotic. It's just all sorts of chopped vegetables. Um, and, you know, I, I can have that, uh, you know, for dinner and then then to have in my salad dressing I can put the sauerkraut and blend it in with some other things and make my own salad dressing that's already populated with the with the probiotic. So that probiotic gets down in the prebiotic and starts to colonize all this bacteria, which 
sounds really gross because we don't like things growing in us. But the reality is, <clears throat> is that in our guts, there are ten times as many bacterial cells and, and all these other microbiome type cells, you know, gut flora cells, than there are human cells. And um, so it's not gross, it's just how we, how we get along and how we, how we were made to, to grow and to live. And in here, we have um, a list of the highest content prebiotic foods. And there's some really surprising things in there. Um, and one of them that Melanie wants me to highlight is the Jerusalem artichoke. These grow like weeds. Um, we grow them in our garden. And this one came out of our garden a couple days ago. And they taste kind of like a water chestnut. And you can buy them in, in the in supermarket. Um, and um, they're, they're really crunchy. You come up, put them in a salad. It tastes a bit like, uh, you know, those water chestnuts you have them in. So, you know, they, they give it a little crunch, you know. And so that's real good. Um, but what happens is the, the, the prebiotic colonizes in the, probi the probiotic, colonizes in the prebiotic, and it creates short-chain fatty acids like butyrate and these kinds, there's lots and lots of them. I'm not going to get into the science because I don't know it. Um, I just watch a few YouTube videos and try to you know, make good decisions. <laughs> um, and, and it creates all these short-chain fatty acids which are really vital for, um, for human nutrition. So that's... Uh, the Jerusalem artichoke, is it related to other artichokes, or is it just... No, I don't think it is, uh, but there are different kinds, like um, I planted these a couple years ago on a bunch of wood chips, and, and that's sort of a reddish one, mm -hmm. um, and that's a, um, I don't know, I think that's one I got in Whole Foods and just planted it outside and it just sort of goes wild. They look like, uh, they look like small sunflowers, you know what a black-eyed Susan is? Mm -hmm. They're like, but they're about that, I guess like, they're about six feet tall. And they, they're beautiful, and then the flowers last for, for months, and so they're really uh, ornamental, too. Um, but I didn't want to go into the probiotics because no one really, without understanding of the prebiotics, because not many people know what a prebiotic is. Mm -hmm. So they, they really go together. It's like, it's like you know, planting a flower in some soil. So when you go to explain it to your kids, that's a good analogy to use. Onions, yeah, and dandelions, you know, things like dandelions are an incredibly nourishing food. If you can get a clean supply of them. Um, I have dandelions in here. You can eat the root and the leaf and you mix it in and stuff with this pretty good. And the chicory grows here. Um, it's a little blue flower. It's not, it, it, the leaves look like dandelion leaves, but the the chicory is, has a big root. It looks just like that. I have it growing everywhere over by my sawmill, and it's just an amazing plant. But I haven't really tried to eat the chicory. But after seeing that, I'm thinking maybe I should. What is gum I don't know. No, I didn't know that one. That's why I didn't check that one. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Does it need to be dry? Maybe that's just how they touch so with the leaves, I'm just making sure that they're kind of like pointy. It, it, you, it's really, really mm -hmm. So they kind of tend to, they're delicious, but they tend to get a little dirty inside because the way that they grow. So I just kind of clean that out. Do you want me to explain the pot, honey? Yes. Okay, where's the cover? Um, here. This is a sauerkraut pot. And okay, so, obviously, you know, there's nothing inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My next trick. Um, <laughs> and it has it has what's called an airlock on it, and I'll show you how that works. Um, basically, what you do, it has these little things here, things overflow, because what happens is when the fermentation starts, it starts to bubble and burp and make all sorts of rude noises, and um, so it's always expansive, yeah, exciting noise. It's expanding all the time until you know the fermentation slows down, and so. What, but you don't want to happen is you don't want foreign air to get in because you're colonizing it with a particular kind of bacteria. So you don't want foreign bacteria coming in. So what you do, you can see this, but there's a little, um, in the pot itself, there's a little moat. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that, you fill that with water, and then when you put this over the water, 
it forms a seal. But stuff can get out, but nothing can go in. And then it, it'll overflow here, so you, can, you, have to, you might want to put it in like a, a tray or something, like a, one of those little uh, basins that you do your laundry in, just something so it can catch anything that spills, especially if you have a hardwood floor in your kitchen. And so that's, a, that's the, the pot. Now, you can use things like that mason jar I just had. You don't have to go whole hog and, you know, tell, tell your, uh, the budgetary person in your household that we need to buy this for, you know, $20 or $50 or however much it costs. You can do it in, um, in a, just a regular mason jar. You don't have the benefit of the air lock, but there's, you can loosely apply the lid so that it, it, it functions similarly. So you just put a... A loose lid on a yeah. mason jar. Because okay. yeah. I've done some of the yeah. making the probiotics. Probably that with Melanie when she's when she's free. But, okay. Yeah. What's that? How do you, if you're doing it in a mason jar, how do you do the airlock? Um, let me see that a little bit towards the. I do have a larger sauerkraut pot, but if you are planning 
That's a wet chop. Yeah. Okay. And here's this little bit that didn't quite make it, so I'll go on to the next bit. But that's that chopped pretty well. I mean, mm -hmm. there's any good bits like that. I'll put that in and give them a nice good one. So that's good. Okay. So, here's my pot. I'm going to chop them in. And it's nice to have it like on, a, on this level of the chair because
She said that's leeks, garlic. Leeks. I haven't done the garlic yet. Okay. Um, that's the it's leeks and carrots, basically, and a little bit of horseradish. Do you want to chop these carrots? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. So do you do kind of like equal parts of your like vegetables, like this much carrot and that much, like kind of equal parts? And usually do like, usually do like mainly cabbage. Mm -hmm. and, oh, thank you. Yeah, that's so um, I'll probably do more cabbage than carrot, but mm -hmm. it's equal parts. That mm -hmm. would be great too. Okay. So, so you just kind of pick and choose yeah, like what, how yeah. much. So. It depends what you have on hand and all that. Okay. The idea was to preserve the harvest. So it's basically what's in season is good too. Okay. Yeah. And like, I've got these um, watermelon radishes here, which I'll probably just do kind of make a separate thing of these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll cut them a little bit later. Is it just as hot, hot when it's raw as it is when it's prepared? I think so. Well, it, isn't it kind of pickled when it's prepared? So, I mean, yeah. we're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> so, I wonder if you could just do horseradish. That would be pretty, yeah, you could, but I mean, it would be pretty intense, I think. Isn't that kind of like what you uh -huh. eat, eat on Passover? You eat it and it makes you cry, and then you <laughs> then you're allowed to eat it with apples and honey and cinnamon to soften the the sorrow. You know, this, uh, wonderful guy come at the weekend to fellowship. It's kind of like not so much preaching as um, like, a, like a TV interview with one of our pastors. Mm -hmm. And this guy, he's Jewish. He, he he came to the states. He became a Christian here, and he lives in Jordan because he's from Israel, right, hun? Originally. Yeah, I think that's what he said. Yep, he believed. Palestinian too. I don't know. It's like I don't, I've got to get my head. I, I, it's one of those things I want to go back on this. <laughs> Take it in a, a bit better, but um, he was so amazing because, like, he was just talking about the situation in the Middle East mm -hmm. and how it was very fortuitous that he was not Muslim because um, otherwise he would be severely persecuted. Mm -hmm. But he, he wouldn't be able to do what he's doing now as a Christian mm -hmm. if he was a Muslim before. Mm -hmm. You know, like, he would be sought after to be killed. <coughs> For becoming a Christian, a, so you're saying. As a Messianic Jew, he's able to, right. um, you know, speak the word of God. And, mm -hmm. and so he, there's this kind of school at the called Jets or something? Yeah, Jets. Yeah, in Jordan. And they, when they built the building, they, what's that inscription on that? Well, they put a Bible or something on the side of the building, but they did it in Greek. So, because yeah. the Muslims didn't do it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's going to go right. <laughs> 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 okay. It's what is that into? <laughs> 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 okay. Um, it's all the twist. It's the more white chopping? No, what? We're going to be a prayer or a pro box. Does anyone want to practice their wet chop? Come on up. Now, if you have just a regular blender, like a, a poor old regular blender. Poor old blender. It'll die and then you'll buy a That's what I have. Can you do that? In, well, I have actually a buy a reaper. You can buy a reaper. These are reaper Vitamix, this ones I got. Mm -hmm. you know, I got because I got them from my kids. Mm -hmm. So you get them a lot cheaper that way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you can go to Walmart. They have a $100 one. It looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Just save the guarantee and just beat on it. Yeah. So is it a Vitamix or is it no, a Ninja? I got a Ninja. I mean, it's only seven hundred watts, but yeah. 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 Ye
to chop the veggies? Yeah, yeah, you can. But for me, I find that it doesn't always like grate the vegetables for a while. Okay. Like I'm constantly picking out large pieces. Okay. Okay. Kind of really so the finer yeah. grate is why you are recommending the wet chop. Yeah. Would you ever use a food processor in the grate speed, you know, where you can just grate? That would work too. Yeah, know. yeah, that's what I that's what I did with the horse oh, radish, okay. but it was kind of like, you know, it's, I usually end up with large pieces that I have to put back in, and I just find it. Well, it's like, so how have you had it? Like, so do you use, so I have about half right now, is that right? Okay. Yeah, so so how much salt did you just right add? Right 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 I just right added like about several tablespoons. Three or so spoons like this. Okay. I never really kind of know for sure. I just eyeball it and it always comes out completely fine. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to put too much salt in things, but you know, you don't have to. It's kind of like when I make the ginger ale, I put white sugar in the ginger ale, which mm -hmm. is like, it just feels really weird, but it's not to worry about because the bacteria eat the white sugar and then they kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, do you, do you use your food processor just very little, or could you do it all um, with the other? If I was going to choose between buying a bad thing and a two processor, mm -hmm. the bad thing would be buying it when you can do everything with one minute. But the, I do prefer to use the two processor to process up the salt recipes. Like I think in this one here, the cranberry, yeah. uh -huh. I said use the food processor, and I said that deliberately for myself to remind myself. I think I started off with the Vitamix, but I didn't want it to get too processed. Right, right, that's hard to do. Yeah, so that's why I made that note on Friday. I put that there because I have to look down on I wanted to remember like which device I use because sometimes this works out better. Really? 
So some um, sauerkrauts that you see in the store, they aren't like lacto fermented. They might have been done with vinegar, but the benefit is with the lacto fermented vegetables. Say that one more time. Some of the sauerkraut that you can buy in the store, right. it's not really what you want to get. Like if it's not right, right. Then, and if it's, it's pasteurized, it doesn't have the, yeah, it's not, right. Yeah, okay. it's good, isn't it? Yeah, that looks great. So I bought one today because um, I do need some. And, uh, so this one is a good one. It's naturally fermented and it's unpasteurized. And that was like two ninety nine at um, Whole Foods. But it's obviously better than But sometimes you're short of time and you're not kind of in the groove. Okay. Because there's a lot coming on at co-op and yeah. Did it? Did that? No, it is. Red cabbage then, or regular cabbage? Yeah, we've got red cabbage in here with the green cabbage and all that. Um, you don't want it to be too watery either because it doesn't matter if the water gets in too much. Like I was worried the first time I tried doing the sack up with wet chunks, I thought it was too much water, but it was fine. So, so without the wet chop, did you chop it that much, that finely? You no, no, no. Like if you're going to chop it by hand, I'll show you a little bit of chopping by hand too in a minute, but it's just, it goes a lot faster with the wet chopping. So does this have the probiotics, the probiotic yeah. kind of properties? Yeah, it's naturally it's well. fermented and it's uh, unpasteurized and it has the filaments. Mm -hmm. right. I think I'm understanding why my dad several years ago. Is this the bird flu or fish flu? Whatever. <laughs> 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 it's like, you know what? The only tip for that is sauerkraut. <laughs> 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 All right, Dad. Whatever. Like you. He said what? The only way that I'm to is sauerkraut. Like showing off their Tamiflu stores. You put it down and say sauerkraut. It's not horrible. I did. 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 I did
once you start yeah. moving out. Yeah. So this cranberry relish, is that also have a, like, mm -hmm. you're speaking about the family for the holidays, but is it also a six week no, I made that like about a week, week and a half before the holidays, before okay. Thanksgiving, and okay. it was great. Okay. And it's still kind of, I'll show you what it looks like actually, I'll show you the apple thing. Okay. Um, this one is gone. Um, I think it's gone. But see, when the, when the matter was like right up to the top, see how this apple kind of yeah. pretty much, mm -hmm. it acted like those weights. Push the measure a little down. bit of liquid that came up above the Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But the apple, because the apple's you know got the skin on and everything, it's like kind of protects it. And the apple's okay. good to eat too. So um, a little bit of that. If you don't have a ginger bag and you need a fermented liquid, what do you use? Um, you could use a little bit of sauerkraut liquid.
see where the more you eat it, it's more of a required thing. I don't think it's here. Rebecca might eat it. I don't think the boys would eat it, but. Yeah. 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 Older boy and your younger boy. Um, it came from got married in such a hurry that um, right, right, right. you know, doing wedding, <laughs> right. shower, I was just like, I, I just did not need time, so I just, I knew that, but it seems like my mom's kind of set, so I thought since I'm going to be here, it'd be kind of nice to have someone that feels like home, you know? And then, so since we have that, my mom's probably going to come, like, yeah. oh, and, uh, so I just went to the store, and I just, like, whatever was that, there was just so many different, like, items to choose from, and I just, uh, <laughs> you know, my I don't remember asking you for the spoons, so I think my mom bought them separately. I don't know how to hook it up, but you know, I can have a teaspoon. I just saw things like that in um, some of our brown. TJ Maxx, I think. Yeah. 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 Yeah.